الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala we're going to study together a very important topic that has to do with zakat has to do with zakat and inshallah ta'ala we're going to study those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned from the eight eight categories of those that uh, are eligible <coughs> that are, alhamdulillah those who are eligible for zakat those who are eligible for zakat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the meaning of which that the sadaqat means the zakat is given for the sake of Allah are meant only for the poor and needy and those who are in charge thereof and those whose heart are to be won over and for the freeing human beings from bondage and for those who are overburdened with debts and every struggle in God's cause and to, for the wayfarer this is an ordinance from Allah and Allah is all knowing wise so in this ayah as you see here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned those who are entitled those who are entitled for zakat those who are entitled for zakat and from this noble verse Allah shows us the rightful receivers of the zakat and this from Allah's justice and mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides them into eight categories and shows us the obligation of the zakat it is not permissible to give zakat to other than these because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is better for his creation than we do but for the people who have inner certainty who could be a better lawgiver than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can be better as a lawgiver than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see Juan here brothers and sisters that it is not permissible to give zakat to those who don't deserve it and at the same time those who don't deserve it it is not permissible for them to ask for it because some people they don't they don't have no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have no shame and they have enough money and they go and they ask for zakat and they ask for sadaqa this is not permissible this is not permissible so now the first the sheikh rahimahullah sheikh bin utaymin he mentioned the first and the second category al fuqara wal masakin the poor and needy the poor and the needy and they are the ones who cannot find a way to support themselves and families they do not have a steady income a successful business and it is on us to help to help them the scholars say so they should be given enough money to sustain themselves to sustain themselves to sustain themselves now they should be given now they should be given enough money to sustain them themselves and their family for one year until the next year is reached also the person who does not make enough money to support himself and family is given the extra amount needed to be able to support them as for the person who is able to support themselves then they are not to be given money even if they ask for it see this is very important for us to know that there are people who do not deserve the zakat 
They don't deserve it. And they ask for it. And you, you know by them doing that, they are committing a sin. Because now they're going to take zakat that doesn't belong to them. They are not entitled for it. They don't belong to that, to those, three, to those eight categories that Allah mentioned in the Quran. And plus, when they take it, now they're taking it from other people who deserve it. So they commit an oppression. They're oppressing others who deserve it. So we don't give it to them, even if they ask for it. They should be advised not to ask for that, which is not permissible to be given to them. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever asks from, from the people for money to gain their own money are only asking for embers from hell. So let them increase or decrease. Collected by Imam Muslim. This is a serious, uh, serious threat. One time, the Prophet ﷺ told Hakim ibn Hizam, radiallahu an, oh, Hakim, this property is like a sweet fresh fruit. Whoever takes it without greediness, he's blessed in it. And whoever takes it with greediness, he is not blessed in it. And he is like a person who eats, but he, he is never satisfied. And the upper given hand is better than the lower receiving hand. Collected by Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. So zakat is not for the rich and those who are able. The rich and those who are able. The third category, these are the ones in charge of collecting and giving out the zakat. They are to be given for the amount of work they put in. If they are financially sound, then they should add it to the zakat that is being given out. And they will participate in getting a reward for that. Number four, the ones whose heart are to be won over. They are the new reverts to Islam. They are the ones whom heart are weak in Iman. They are given the money to strengthen their commitment to Islam. So those who are new to Islam, we give them zakat. We give them the zakat to strengthen their commitment to Islam. Number five, to free the slaves. They are given the money that is enough to buy their freedom. To buy their freedom. Number six, the ones whom are burdened with debts, they are given enough money so that they can get out of debt, so that they can repair the relationship between them and the Muslim who loaned them the money. There is a hadith in Muslim that Qabis al-Hilali said, I was under debt and I came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and begged from him regarding it. He said, wait till we receive Sadaqa so that we order that to be given to you. He again said, Qabisa begging is not permissible but for, for the ones of the three classes of persons. One who has incurred debt. So the one who, who has incurred debt, it's permissible for them to ask. It's permissible for them to ask. The seventh category. This is for jihad in the path of Allah. This is for jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is meant to make the word of Allah the highest. It is given to the mujahid with this intention. They are given in enough so that they can perform jihad, so they can purchase weapons. Category 8. This is for the wayfarer. This is for the person who travels 
and is cut off from wealth and traveling. They should be given enough to go back to their family if they are rich. Then they have no right to the money. Zakat is not to be given to a disbeliever except if they are under the category of their heart being won over. Like for example, if a disbeliever is inclined towards Islam, right? He showed some interest towards Islam or she showed some interest towards Islam, you give them zakat. You give them zakat. Zakat is not given to a rich person, to a rich person, except if they are the one collecting and distributing distributing it. So if they were distributing the zakat and collecting it, yes, that's different. Or fighting for the sake of Allah. Or need to get out of debt to repair that which is between them and another Muslim. Like a rich person can be in debt, can be in debt. Sometimes his business doesn't work out and his business, uh, you know, doesn't do well and he closes down his business, and then he is in debt. In this case, we can help them. We can help this person. طيب. Zakat is not to be paid on someone dependent. On someone dependent. It can be paid to someone's family, someone's family member as long as they are not their dependent. What does that mean? It means, for example, you don't give zakat to your wife, to your, uh, to your children, because you, they are dependent. You provide for them. You provide for them. You provide for them. <clears throat> Unless one of the spouses is poor. is poor, like the wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, عنه, she used to give him her zakat. She used to give him her zakat. Also, also the parents. The parents, if you provide for them, you don't give them zakat. If you provide for them, you don't give them zakat. If you provide for them, you don't give them zakat. Because they're dependent. They're dependent. But if they're not dependent, you give them zakat if they're poor. You give them the, the, the zakat. Likewise, the rest of your family members. So now here, we're going to summarize it, inshallah ta'ala for you, that there are eight categories of those that deserve to receive the zakat. They are eligible for it. So the first categories, the Sheikh Ibn Uthimin mentioned, he mentioned two. He mentioned two. So those are the ones who are poor and needy. Those who are poor and needy. So a poor person, the one who doesn't have anything. So that one, we give them zakat to sustain them for one year. For one year. Look how Islam takes care of the society. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. The needy person is someone who has but doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough. Like for example, he may have money to, to, to pay the rent. But he doesn't have the money to pay the food, to pay for his bills and stuff like that. So we give, them, we give him to you know, take care of whatever is left. So these are the first ones that are mentioned in the ayah. The poor and needy. And the third categories are those who, that the Muslim ruler has put in charge of collecting the zakat. They're the one that collect it and they, they're the one that distribute it. Those, they are to be given from the zakat money. They are to be given from the zakat because it's a job. So they get a salary. They get a job. So it's a job to go out and collecting zakat from the people and then 
given it out. The fourth category, the ones whose heart are to be won over, those are the reverts. The reverts, because they're new to Islam, so they need some financial support. They need someone to support them. Number five, to free the slave. To free the slave. Look how Islam encourages us to free the slave. And category number six, the one who is burdened with debt. And some people, when they have debts, they, can, they cannot even sleep. They cannot even sleep. So alhamdulillah, Islam is a beautiful religion. So we take care of this individual. Anyone who has debt, we give them zakat. Even if they were, if they were rich people, and they run into a situation where they have a lot of debt and they can't pay it off, we can give them the zakat. Number seven, in the way of Allah, jihad fi sabilillah. So the, those are the ones who fight to raise the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those we give them zakat. And number eight, the wayfarer, the one who's traveling and he ran out of provision, he doesn't have any provision, so he doesn't have anything, we give him zakat so that he can take care of his business, so that he can go back home, he can buy himself a ticket, buy food that he needs and, and, and things like that, so that he can uh, continue to re so that he can reach his destination. So that's the wayfarer. And the Sheikh mentioned also that you don't give zakat to a disbeliever. We don't give zakat to a disbeliever. Zakat is not to be given to a disbeliever unless there is a maslaha. There is a benefit. Like for example, we see that this disbeliever is one of the leaders, right? And he is inclined towards Islam. Then we give him zakat. We give him zakat so that he will love this religion and he will accept Islam. Likewise, the commoners, among the Christians and the Jews and the like, if they are inclined towards Islam, we give them the zakat. We give them the zakat. A zakat is not to be given to a rich person. And it's haram for this person to be asking for it. Unless he is one of those who collect it and distribute it. Zakat is not to be given to someone dependent. You don't give your zakat to your, your children, your wife, the one that you provide for. You don't give them zakat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all العلم النافع والعمل الصالح الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته